blessings, glory, and honor unto the Lord our God. We thank God because God is moving mightily in our lives. God is moving mightily in your life. I know it to be so because if God answers prayers, then God is working. And you and I, we are praying and thanking God. We are approaching God with faith, great faith that is. We're approaching God with great expectation and we're in that process. So don't quit, don't give up. Know that God is for you and God is not against you. Know that God is for you and he has broken the power. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit has broken the attack pattern of the enemy. The devil is a liar. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. I don't care what's going on. Keep your eyes focused on God. Keep your eyes focused on the promises of God. And then you and I, we must keep engaged and active in our resistance and our rebuke and our command of Satan to be defeated in our lives. And then as we speak that word and stand on that word and we say to God and we say to ourselves, the word is working. God's power is flowing. I'm telling you right now, that, that is great faith talking. That right there in the name of Jesus, great expectation. We just love and thank God for every word. Now, I want to go right back and jump snap dab right into the middle of the very end of the discourse that Jesus is having with these Pharisees and these Sadducees and these scribes concerning him casting out the devil. And they saying that Jesus did that because he was in, in partnership with Satan. Jesus denied that. Jesus explained and broke it down for him and let him know that, that he, by the power and the finger of God, by the word of God and the truth of God, he cast out devils and he cast out that devil. And glory to God, you know, when you begin to work and you begin to move forward in the things of God, you're going to face some opposition. But that opposition is facing you coming full throttle, coming full speed ahead, coming with full faith and full praise and glory and honoring God, full of the word of God. That devil, the people that the devil is using cannot stop and break the power flow of God that's coming through your life. So I'm just thankful to God because he made it clear in the scripture. So Jesus, he laid that out to these guys. They said, you're, you're casting out demons with the help of Satan. Jesus says, no, I'm not. We said this on the last, the last uh, lesson. You know, one of the greatest disrespects that we can give and say to God, and, and these guys did it. You cannot take a child of God a servant of God, you cannot take, now this is Jesus they're talking to, you, you cannot take the things of God, you cannot take the glory and the manifestation of the word and the power of God and accuse those that are of God of being of the devil. That's what these guys did. You're talking about being disrespectful. You're talking about being misinformed. You're talking about hating. You're talking about so, so jealous and so envious of the impact of a child of God. And you're going to say the day of the devil? Whoa, that, that, no, that's wrong. That's just wrong. And you got to understand this here, child of God, as you and I, as we begin to continue to grow in God and begin to manifest the, 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 the word of God, the truth of God, people, are go you know what I mean? It may stir some people the wrong way. But when it stirs them the wrong way, you got to come in there and correct them and let them know, I am not of the devil. I am not doing what Satan wants me to do. I am not in league with Satan, but I am from God. I am of God. And what I'm doing is getting better at manifesting the, the will and the, and the very knowledge and the wisdom of God and the power of God. I'm telling you right now, you need to get ready because as you and I have submitted to God, as you and I trust in the, the resources of God, God is turning up the power, turning up their, their, their skill sets in our lives. And that may rub some people wrong. I got to tell you that right now. It may rub some people wrong. And so we got to now, you know what I mean, not only deal with the devil, but we got to deal with, you know what I mean, people that's under the influence of Satan. And we got to bring them the knowledge of God and bring them the reasoning of God and not be judgmental again, not be condemning. And then we got to be aware that that sometimes when they respond negatively to the word of God coming out of your life, then you got to be able to help them to see that they're responding negatively to the word coming out of your life and that the word that's coming out of your life is not you trying to outdo them, but it is you trying to be the best that you can be for the glory of God at the end of the day. 
We want to all hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. So when the word of God you speak, when the actions and the things that you do that are clearly identified as God and you evoke out of people a negative response, they can't get with you. They can't get behind you. They can't encourage you to, to keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing, although it may be convicting to them, but what you're doing is showing them the hope, showing them the faith that it, number one, can be done. Number two, God said you can do it. And then number three, the joy of walking in the things of God. So we dealt with the last time we were here, we were talking about how that God has made us stronger than Satan. That's the one thing that the devil does not want us to know, that we are stronger than him, that we have through Jesus Christ, through the word of God, through the Father God, through the Holy Spirit, that we have overcoming dominion over Satan. We have the victory over him already. And so when we face Satan, when we face Satan, we're facing Satan, Satan as the very truth that God has decreed about us. We are stronger than him. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to put up a fight because he's, he wants you in doubt. He wants me in doubt. He wants us to doubt what God has said. And so when he comes against us trying to convince us with arguments that, that, that we are not who we are and that we can't do what God said we can do, who are you? You from God. We are of God. And we've overcome Satan. We've overcome everything in the world. So we got to stay with that mentality. Even when Satan is resisting and Satan is trying to oppose us and Satan is trying to, you know what I mean, water us down into thinking how he thinks, into believing what he's saying. Thoughts come into our mind from God. They come into our mind from Satan. Now, what we do with the thoughts of God or with the thoughts of Satan, we now start creating our own thoughts based on what God or Satan is saying. So when you can recognize God's word, you can recognize God's thoughts, you can recognize God talking to you, now you stand on God. You stand with God. You start, you know what I mean? You start gathering, and you know what I mean? And scattering Satan. You gathering the power, the strength, the wisdom of God, and you scattering Satan's attack. You scattering and dividing him. Remember, in this passage in Luke chapter 11, I'm telling you right now, Jesus lays this thing out really, really clear. And now we, we choose to be on Jesus' side. We choose to allow Jesus to teach us and develop in us that same boldness, that same character, that same strength that he, oh, glory to God, that he operated in. I still believe that it's possible. I still believe and I know that God will back us. Look at here. He goes in there and when he breaks down this word, when he breaks down this word overcometh, I like this here. Notice how God is identifying us. Number one, God is saying you stronger than him. Talking about Satan. You, you are designed and strengthened to take his armor. Oh, hallelujah. And then God says, with your trust in me and your obedience to me, you not only strengthen to take his armor, but you're also strengthened to divide his spoils. Now, I'm telling you right now, that is uncomfortable for Satan. He don't like saints that rise up on that level of warfare. And while I'm talking about warfare, you got to understand something, that all through your life, all through our lives, we're, we're battling. But the God that we serve is known by the name Jehovah Sabaoth. And he is the God of warfare. He is the Lord of hosts. I mean, God, God's got a mighty army. And you and I, we're a part of that army. And when we start dealing with Satan and dealing with life, we're conquerors. Glory to God. We're overcomers. Nikio is the word that we left off on. And we went through all of that. And tonight we are going to go and we're going to deal with David's life. Because David, he's a human. You know what I mean? David, at this point in time in his life, when he defeated Goliath, he was not inaugurated as king. He was still watching the sheep. But you know what I mean? We're going to see that story. It doesn't matter what your current position is. If you believe, and I know you do, when we believe that God is working, that God is moving us through the process, God is bringing us to that place where we manifest the dominance of God over every attack of the enemy. And we're seeing truth because we know the truth now. 
and we're able to discern, discern the truth. Now, once you know the truth and you can discern the truth, now you just got to be able to stand for the truth and trust God to be able to back that truth. And I'm telling you, God will. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they will back their truth. So watch this here. Overcome it real quick. It means to subdue. In other words, to put Satan in order. Put him in check. Number two, we talk about overcome it. It's the Greek word nikio. And it means to place under dominion in an orderly fashion. Now, our orderly fashion is not being nice to Satan. Our orderly fashion is doing it the way Jesus did it. I mean, we're literally taking Jesus's formula, how he did it, and we're speaking to Satan, we're speaking to circumstances, we're speaking to situations exactly the way Jesus did, but we're doing it, believing and expecting it to manifest in Jesus' name. Number three, this word overcometh. Now, this is Jesus said, you're stronger than Satan. You're an overcomer. You're overcoming him. You're taking his armor. You're taking and dividing his spoil. You're dividing all of his resources, dividing his kingdom. I'm putting you putting us, you, we putting a split right down the middle of his kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, I'm going to say this here. Whenever you go into rebuke mode against Satan, towards Satan, whenever you go into resisting mode towards Satan, against Satan, whenever you start commanding, Satan, you have to do it in the name of Jesus. And you got to, be, listen, you got to be, you got to be firm with it. You, you know what I mean? You got to be like, I ain't, I, no. And, and when, and when Satan resists you, you got to be stronger than him and how you deal with him and talk to him. You got to make up your mind and keep your mind made up. No, saying you got to obey me. And saints, child of God, Satan's got to obey you. He has to obey you. Satan in every situation, it's got to obey you, but you it, it will only obey you when you're standing in the name of Jesus and when you're rebuking that situation with the word of God. You need things to accelerate and speed up. You, you start praising, you start rebuking, you start praising God, rebuking Satan. You start commanding that situation to change. I don't care what it is, command it to change. If you put your faith on it and put your prayer to it and put your praise to it in the name of Jesus, that thing's got to obey. So whatever you do, when you start dealing with that devil, when you start dealing with advancement, you have to put the name of Jesus to it. You got to do this in Jesus' name. So now, the third definition of Nikio is to conquer. Oh, sweet Jesus. And this is who you are. This is what you are. This is what God is building you to be. A conqueror, a conqueror over every issue and problem in life. The good news is, is that God knows how to conquer. Mm -hmm. God knows how to overcome. Oh, yes. And we look at Jesus and we see it in manifestation. Actually, you look at anything that God has put his hands to, you see conquering. You see the ability of God to call it to rise up and overcome. Fourth definition of Nikio, to prevail. This is you. This is me. This is who we are. This is what we're doing in the midst of our circumstance and our situation. You are prevailing. Satan wants you to think that you're not. Just because he's turned up the heat, remember we were talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he's turned up the heat seven times hotter. He's trying to intimidate us into backing off, backing down, and giving up. But we don't do that because that's not a part of our DNA. That is not a part of our anatomy. That is not a part of our renewed mind. Our mind is renewed to the word of God, and we trust God, and we know that God, if he did it in the past, God will do it today. He'll do it in your future. And so I like this here. And then number five of Nikhil, get the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you right now, you and I, spiritually, we've been given the victory. Now, physically, we're going for to do those things to overcome and drive Satan into the ground. Oh, hallelujah. You know, when you start speaking it, you start vocalizing it, you know what I mean? And then, then all of a sudden, you start imagining it. You start seeing yourself with the victory, victory, you visualizing it. Then all of a sudden, you're going to realize it. The, the vocalization starts first. You, you find out what God says, and you get in agreement with God. Then secondly, secondly, you now start visualizing. So you start speaking who you are in Christ, what you are in Christ. You start speaking that. Next thing you know, you're going to hear it, and faith is going to come. You're going to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Then as you continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger, now God says, now, 
Create a picture of you walking in victory. Create a picture of you walking free and walking in the, the fullness of the thing that you're believing God to do. Then lastly, the physical will line up with what you've been saying in the name of Jesus, what you've now visualized in the name of Jesus, and then God's power will instruct you and, and literally create the thing you prayed for, the thing that you're believing for. Oh, that's some good stuff. Then number six, to carry off and come off victorious. This is you. You're the overcomer. You're, you're literally, by the hand of God, by the word of God, by the finger of God, by the name of Jesus, by that word, oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't mind repeating it. By the word of God, the finger of God, the spirit of God, by the name of Jesus, listen, by the, uh, the resource of God, you are carrying off and coming off victorious, 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 hallelujah. You got the victory. Yeah, this is done. This is the mindset that you got to work in. Let me tell you something. Walking in this mindset, staying consistent in this mindset, Man, it, 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 it is a battle because Satan does not want us operating in and manifesting this type of attitude, this type of performance against his attacks, okay? And so now, when we start talking Nikhil or overcometh, this is us. We're the overcomers, okay? Number seven, this is, this is what Nikhil means. This is what you are meaning in the eyes of Satan, this is what you're developing, and he sees this, and man, he's he's concerned, or he's really concerned. Of Christ, victorious over all his foes. This oh, glory to God, glory to God. This is this is our new mindset. We're victorious over every enemy that comes against us, over all of our foes in the name of Jesus. Remember, we gotta keep Jesus' name employed, we gotta keep Jesus' name literally released. In our situation, I mean, we, we got to be like Jesus, 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 dropping it on them. The Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. We got to be putting the authority, we got to be putting the identity of God on it. We got, we introducing Satan and all of his attacks to the deity, the divinity that kicked him out years ago. Yeah, 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 that's powerful. Number eight, talking about overcoming. This is who you and I, this is who we are. We are those Christians that hold fast we hold steady, we stay convinced and firm to our faith, even unto death. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, when you're talking about a made-up mind, your mind is made up when you say, I'm going to stand till I die. I'm going to do this faithfully in the name of Jesus till I die. In other words, ain't no quitting me. Ain't no, I'm not turning. I'm not giving up. This is us. This is a whole attitude. This, this is the attitude of a giant killer. When you know that you are empowered by God to break satanic things, to destroy satanic things, to bring satanic things to an end, or you, when you now, you know the word of God and you trust the word of God, when I know the word of God in any situation and trust the word of God in any situation, when we know this and trust God, we overcoming everything. I'm telling you right now, I love this. Even unto the death, that means we're not quitting. We're not giving up. Against the power of their foes and temptations and persecutions, it doesn't matter how that devil come at us. He know that he is not going to wear us down. But we're going to use every resource of God, every resource of wisdom and knowledge from God in the name of Jesus. And we already have predetermined that the end result of this thing will be us glorifying God, us united with God, us rebuking and standing and praising and worshiping God. See the end of your prayers. See it in your mind. Speak it with your mouth. Speak it with your words. When you speak your words in Jesus' name, you start creating things. You create with the glory and the power of God. When you speak the word of God, you're creating a reality. You're changing a reality. And you got to believe that. And, and, and you got to discipline yourself. I got to discipline ourselves. We got to discipline ourselves to be like Jesus, to stay focused on the task at hand, focused on employing the word of God, on releasing the word of God and the name of Jesus. Okay, watch this here. The last definition of this word, Nikhil, 
or overcometh is when one is arraigned or goes to law to win the case, to maintain one's cause. In other words, all of this is saying that the attitude, the performance of us moving forward, we are overcomers. Our performance is based on the gift of God giving us the strength and making us stronger than Satan, giving us the strength and the wisdom to overcome Satan. And see, when you and I, when we begin to identify with that, when we begin to now, you know what I mean, talk like that, we thinking like that, you think like it because you're renewing your mind, I'm renewing our mind, we're renewing our mind to the word of God. Now we're starting to talk like that because we believe God will change our reality. And we, how long do you do that? Until the reality changes. Look at this here. Ninth definition. One, when he is arraigned or goes to law, the minute you trust God, you now, you in the battle. And you got to keep throwing them scriptures, praise, worship, thanking God, and watch this here. And you can, I don't care, I don't care what the enemy is doing. I don't care how he is attacking. I'm telling you right now, he's attacking. It's always wonderful when you're seeing the reality change. But it's during those times when it doesn't seem like the reality is changing, that's when you got you to gotta pour it on even more. You got to stand even more. You got to resist even more. You got to rebuke even more. You got to do something. You got to get, you know what I mean? You got to get spiritually aggressive. Sometimes you may have to fast. You know what I mean? You may have to, you may have to pray more. You got to do more. You got to get in that word more. But what that does is it keeps you connected and focused on your warfare against whatever attack Satan is bringing against you. Now watch this here. Verse 23, Luke 11, verse 23. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. That's an enemy. And see, that devil is not for you. That devil is not with you to be your friend. He with you to try to be your Lord. That devil is not trying to help you gather and get stronger in the things of God. He's trying to scatter every area of your life, trying to divide it, trying to, trying to push it into different directions and, and weaken it and, and, and try to bring you and I into a state of confusion. But that's not happening. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us confusion, but God has given us a sound mind. And I'm telling you right now, we're renewing our minds to the word of God. And oh, sweet Jesus, listen, just be consistent. Be consistent. Stand, resist that devil. I, I, I listened to the entire book of Job, but I listened to it from the message Bible. Oh my God, okay? It, it, it just pulls out some things. And, you know, in the whole story of Job, you know, you got to recognize people in your life that's gathering and helping you to get stronger and those that's scattering and trying to weaken you. You know what I mean? With slick comments and, and stuff like that and, and resisting you. Well, Job, I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. Job was living, I mean, he was living the life of God. He was walking in the blessings of God, the authority of God, the wisdom of God. He was a witnesser. He was an encourager. He spoke the word of God. He was the richest in the East. Nobody was like him, but he had some friends. He had some friends, okay? And then he had some family, all right? Now watch this here. Job went through an ordeal where he lost it all. He was attacked with sickness. His kids were killed. His friends came to condemn him and to accuse him of wrongdoing. Now, his friends, you know what I mean, Bildad and, and them guys, uh, Eliab and, 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 and I forget their names right now, but these guys, supposed to be his friends, these supposed to be his partners, his running buddies, they looking at him and they saying, you done sinned against God because none of this negativity comes on you when you when you're doing right. So you doing something wrong. And these cats, man, they berated Job. They beat Job up trying, just, just, they were just trying to get him to admit, you wrong, you done sinned against God. That's why all this mess is happening against you. And Job was like, no, I have not sinned against God. I don't know why God is doing this to me. I don't know why this is happening. This is, my situation is so bad, I wish I was dead. I wish I wasn't even born. But what none of these guys realized is that in the spirit realm, in the spirit realm, 
Satan had accused Job of serving God for the blessings and the position that God had placed him in. And you hear me, hear me, child of God. When, when you are flowing in the things of God, and you know, and I know when we are flowing better and getting stronger in the things of God, that Satan is going to come at you. But what these guys didn't know, and I'm listening to, I've listened to Job and read Job multiple times. But on this time through, God was saying, look, you got to know in your life, when you doing what God says do, and Satan now is turning up the heat against you. And what happened with Job's life? Job didn't know this. Those his, his, his guys didn't know this. They didn't know that Satan was the one attacking Job. That Satan was the one that put that sickness on Job. That it wasn't God. God allowed it. But there was other things going on that was behind the scenes in the spirit realm that Job didn't know, that Eliab didn't know, that Bildad the Shuhite didn't know, that none of them guys knew. But they was trying to, you know, they was trying to get at Job. And in that moment, they wasn't helping Job to gather strength. They wasn't helping Job to stand strong. They was trying to tear Job down. Now, when you look at these guys and you look at all of what they were saying, some of the stuff that they were saying, you know what I mean, made some sense. But what they were saying to Job was not from God. Their motive was to try to break Job down, to get, try to get Job not to stand on his relationship and the word that he knew about God. You know, Jesus said, if you ain't gathering with me, you scattering. If you ain't for me, you against me. In that story, these guys, they came, and you know what I mean? You listen to what they were saying. And see, a lot of times we think that what these guys were saying was ordained of God. And it was not. Because after all of the different back and forth discourse, we come to see that the thing that Job feared gave Satan the okay and the ability to bring that kind of devastation on. I'm just going to say this to you as we move on. Don't be afraid in the middle of your battle. You stand strong and full of confidence in God. Don't be afraid of that devil. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of, of ruin. That's not your narrative. That is not the end of the story for you ordained by God. So Job now, Job is, you know, Job is letting it out now because Job, he don't know. He think it's God that's done this to him. And then his buddies is trying to say that God did it because you sinned. And what they didn't know is that behind the scenes, Satan was accusing Job and was accusing God. Satan was accusing God of buying and being, excuse me, a sugar daddy to Job, a sugar daddy to humanity. You don't bless them. But if you take the blessings from them, they'll curse you to your face. And God said this and made it clear for eternity. No, I'm the blesser. But Satan, you have authority and dominion in the earth. First round, don't touch his life. And Satan went in there and took everything. Everything of material value. That's why we can't put our trust and our, our emotions in material things. Keep them in God. And now you did the attack. The battle is on. Satan wants to enslave. He wants to enslave us. But he can't enslave us. He's our slave, actually. He used to do what we tell him to do. Then you see, you know what I mean? The sons of God, they got to appear before God again. God says to Satan, now you wanted me to move on Job. And notice Job kept his integrity. He would not give up. And then, and then Satan says, well, touch his flesh. And God says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, listen, Job loves me. Now I'm going to allow you to get at him if you can get at him. I put that if you can get at him in there. Satan went out from the presence of God, smote Job with boils and all of this here. And Job was now, he not only lost all of his material wealth, but now he was battling sickness. He's battling a condition and he's miserable and wanting to die. But yet he did not, he did not curse God and get disrespectful to God. You know, a lot of people go through stuff that Satan is attacking them with and they get disrespectful to God. It's because they don't know. Job didn't know, but he held his integrity. He held his love for God. Now he got these guys 
they coming at them and they accusing them of sinning. They accusing them of being a hypocrite. You know what I mean? You got to watch the haters. You got to watch because when you look at the tone of what they were doing and what they were saying, you know what I mean? They were like, oh, yeah, now you done helped everybody else. Now when it come on you, now you can't help. You done did something wrong. You telling everybody else to do right. You telling everybody else to stand up right. And then by, by the time you get to like the 36, 37 chapter of Job, now Job is like, look, I ain't did nothing. I don't know why God's doing this. I don't know. I ain't did nothing. I'm trying to figure out what God is doing, why this is happening to me. A lot of people get like that. Then all of a sudden, God starts speaking around about 38 chapter, 38, 39. God starts speaking. So first thing, God says, listen, God says to Eliab and, and Bildad the Shuhite and the other guy, the mother two, he says, he says, first of all, who do y'all think y'all are? You don't speak for me. You did not speak to me, speaking to Job. That wasn't you. You didn't get that from me. You got that from Satan. You got to watch folk that speak for Satan against your life. Here these guys, they're supposed to be friends. His family, but what was left was his wife. She like cursed God and died. His friends, the ones that's supposed to be encouraging him, they in there taking cheap shots at him. They taking jabs at him. Whether they meant well or not. But they was throwing some jabs at him. You know what I mean? And then God comes in and says, all of y'all, wrong. You weren't speaking for me. And y'all need to repent. And y'all need to get it right. Then God started validating Job. But before he started validating Job, God had to clean up Job's thinking. And God says, okay, Job, you think you know what's going on? Because you don't know nothing. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't even know why this attack hit you like this. And even though you, you, you know what I mean, you thought it was me, you didn't get disrespectful and start, you know, you ain't curse me, you know what I mean, and, and get disrespectful. So that's why me and you having this conversation right now. I'm just paraphrasing. And then God says, okay, first of all, and then God just started laying out some stuff. God said, well, well, well you know where snow come from? You, you know, you know where Orion and, and, and Pallades, them sisters, you, you know, you, do you know where they come from? You know what they're doing? No, you don't know that, right? All right, you, you know where hell comes from? Do you know where the storehouses of hell is, is kept? So by the time God got done with Job, Job just shut up. You know what I'm learning to do? You know, especially when I understand why things are happening the way they are, why people respond the way they respond. That shut up. Just shut up. Just go to God. Say, okay, God, teach me. So when God got done with Job, when God got Job more understanding of the warfare that was going on, because Job did not get disrespectful because of the afflictions and the, and the tests and the trials, because Job remained faithful, God said, all right, now, you know, you, you read the end of the story, God made all them boys repent, made them all apologize, bring gifts to Job, Job gets restored, all of the people that saw what Job was going through, they all, God touched their hearts. They start bringing Job gifts and they just, you know what I mean? And then the Bible says that God gave Job double for his trouble. You know what? Sometimes you're going to face some challenges. Some You're going to face Satan turning up the heat against your life. It's not because you've done something wrong. It's because you're doing something right. It's because you're standing. It's because your love for God is manifesting. I just want to encourage you that no matter what's going on, don't get angry with God. Now, now you can, God will forgive you, but you have to repent, but don't get angry with God. And it's okay to ask God, what's going on? I don't understand this. Help me to understand this. And God will help you. God will give you the knowledge. And then God will give you the wisdom on how to deal with folks and deal with folks. You just got to deal with the truth. When they treating you with disrespect, they're not honoring you and they know they should. Maybe it could be jealousy on their part. Maybe it could be anger or hurt on their part. Something got them, something got them spun up. But the word of God will get them free. And then, and then I'm just going to say this on the flip, all right? If you've done something wrong to get people to kind of come at you, you just need to repent. It's so simple. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. And then you do better. Oh, glory to God, that's powerful. 
Look at this here. Verse 23, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Now, I'm going to end it right there because in your life, in our lives, we need to start recognizing the people that's for us and the people that's not. We got we to gotta look at the people that's, you know what I mean, gathering and the people that's scattering people that's gathering with you and for you and people that are scattering against you, okay? And and, and it's so important. And a lot of times, what you see is what you see. We can give we can give a lot of, and make a lot of allowances for folk, but you know what I mean? Actions that they say speak louder than words. Now, now, we said we're going to deal with this because all of this is all about this whole chapter of you being stronger than Satan, you overcoming, it, it came out of, you know what I mean, the fact that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. This is what God has done in you and is doing in you. And so now we're talking about giant killer, right? So now you are God's problem solver in that situation. You, you're the one. Look for God to give you the wisdom. Look for God to give you the knowledge. Look for God to come in and just absolutely turn that situation around. So 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to do some reading, right? And then I just, because we, we, we're we going to set the stage, the narrative for what God did and what God is doing in you and what God is doing in us is a supernatural work. It's a supernatural endowment. God has given us an attitude and God has given us a skill set, a performance base that, that when your attitude from God and your performance from God and in God and through God, when that begins to release and manifest in your life, it is, it is, it is, listen, it's drenched with the anointing of God. It's drenched with the purpose of God. It's drenched with the backing of God. And it doesn't matter what you're facing. If you're facing a giant, you got to know who you are. You stronger than him. You, 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 you're an overcomer in that situation. You the giant killer. So whatever Satan's bringing, you are ordained and you are built to kill it. Hallelujah. Now, some people say that's too strong. Now, that's not strong enough, actually. So now watch this here. This is the scenario that King David was dealing with. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 17 is where I'm going to start. 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and they were gathered together to Shekhar, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shakar and Ezekiah and Ezekiah in Ephestami. And Saul and the men, watch this here, of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Eli and set the battle in array against the Philistines. All right, so it's one thing to show up to battle, look like you're ready for battle, but you got to be ready for battle. Because, oh, sweet Jesus, because the battles that we face in life, Satan has a desired end result. And God has a desired end result through you and for you, for us, right? And so when we strong in the Lord, we're going to get the end result that God has ordained for us. Look at this here. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Hmm. I'm reminded, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Good God Almighty. Okay, look at this here. Look at this here. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. This dude was tall. This dude was like nine foot plus. All right. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and his coat was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat of mail was 5,000 shekels of brass. Now, what you need to understand is this here. You and I, no matter what situation we're in, whether we're at the top of victory, or whether we're in the middle of the battle, or whether we're at the beginning of the battle, do not let what it looks like shake your faith. Don't let what the situation looks like get you to turn your gaze off of what God has promised you and what God is making you like and making it like in the end result. Let me say that again. I'm going to see if I can clean it up a little bit. 
don't don't look at what the current giant you're facing has in its armament has at its disposal don't look at that but look at who you represent look at what you represent look at the god you serve and the promises that the father the son the holy spirit has made look at the prayers that god has already answered in your past and and look at the the authority that we have in the name of jesus now in the physical natural realm goliath if you was going to bet goliath or david chances are based on looks you're going to bet on david i mean you're going to bet on goliath but the only way that you'll bet on david is if you know the god of david and see in life people may not be in your corner they may not think you're gonna make it because they don't know the god you serve and the god you serve is an overcoming god and the god you serve the god we serve has blessed us with the anointing and the endorsement to overcome yeah look at this here and he had greaves of brass upon his legs a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. Goliath looked impregnable. David looked exposed. Now here comes Goliath with all of this weaponry. He's a killer. Here comes David with a slingshot and rocks. But David is a killer also. But David is a killer through the endorsement and the power and the anointing of God, the abilities of God. Goliath was a killer with the abilities of Satan. Oh, I got to go back here. Jesus said, if you ain't for me, you against me. And whoever's against Jesus is for Satan. And Goliath was in that category of being labeled, you against Jesus Christ. You against God the Father. You against the Holy Spirit. You against the children of God. You're not going to win. And that's Bible. But in our lives now, how do we make this applicable in our lives? Doesn't matter what Satan is coming at you with. Doesn't matter what you are going to accomplish for God. God is for you. Satan is against you. Satan is going to be dropped to his face. Satan don't like this kind of preaching. He don't like Christians that talk like this here. He'll turn the heat up. But the glory in Satan turning the heat up and attacking more is your love for God, our love for God, our standing and trusting God. When most would quit, when most would run, we standing strong and facing God and facing our challenge. And we're standing there, even though it looks like there's no way we can win, there's no way we can overcome, but yet we reaffirm our experience in God. You're reaffirming your experience with God. Believe in God. What has God delivered you from? And whatever God has delivered you from, God will deliver you from whatever you're dealing with. Whatever God has delivered you from and where God has placed you as victorious over Satan, God has placed you there to stay. I'm going to say that again. God has placed you in victory to stay. You're not going to lose ground. You're not going to lose to Satan. You're not going to lose to the circumstance and the situation. And that's where we now, if we got to strap in a little bit tighter, if we got to read a little bit more of the word of God, if we got to pray a little bit more, if we got to praise a little bit more, if we got to fast a little bit more because Satan done turned the situation up seven times hotter, and it seems that there's no encouragement coming from you. I mean, coming to you. There's no encouragement coming from family. No encouragement coming from your so-called friends. You got three friends that are always, that are always have your back. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you got to go out to battle alone. King David 
He's looking at Goliath and he is not there with the army backing him. The army is still in their scared state, in their confused state, in their weakened state. That's not us, not in this generation. No, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, we stand it. And having done all the stand, we're standing ready to make moves. And you, hallelujah, are making moves for God. They got to be for God. They got to be in Jesus' name. God back you. God's got you. So watch this here. Watch this here. Now, it gets worse. It's one thing to have a circumstance in a situation look you in the face. And it looks stronger. It looks impossible. You know what I mean? But when you now are standing in the name of Jesus, and you're standing in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, and you're speaking the word of God, it doesn't matter what that thing is saying to you. You got to learn how to talk back to that thing, and you got to talk back to that thing as an overcomer, as God's champion. Notice, the champion of the Philistines, or in other words, the champion of Satan, came out. And, and look at him, now he's going he to stand. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out? to set your battle in array, am not I a Philistine and you servants of Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, listen to this, I defy the armies of God this day Give me a man that they will come to me and we may fight. This is disrespect right here. But it's not just disrespect to the armies of God. This is, this is, this is disrespect to God. Because remember, Israel represents God. You of God, I'm of God. Look at this here. When Saul and all the Israelites heard these words, of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afeared. They were afeared. They were greatly afraid because of what this guy looked like and because of what he talked like. This is some, this guy had great faith in Satan. He had great faith in Satan's ability. He had great faith in Satan's weapons. And he came with a boldness, with a, with a, with a rebuke with an arrogance, speaking to the children of God, speaking to, to the, the Saul. And that's what the world and Satan is trying to do to us as, as believers in Jesus Christ. That's what Satan is trying to do to the church. And he ain't doing that to us no more. Because we, we, we David's in the church. Hallelujah, giant killer. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and had eight sons, and the men went among, watch this here, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to battle. Now, now David got family up in there, okay? And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him, Abinadab, and third, Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. Now, the, David's three brothers, these were trained men of war. They were trained to kill. But we see at the sight of Satan, and at the sight of his attack, at the sight of his threats, at the hearing of his threats. They saw Goliath. They heard the threats. They heard the demands. They were dismayed and afraid from Saul to the entire army. God always has a David. God always has a giant killer. God always has somebody that knows God, somebody that's got experience with God, Somebody that has not forgotten what God has done. Somebody that says, you know what? First of all, 
you coming against the things of God. And well, I don't like that. You coming against God. I really don't like that. And that was the attitude of David. David had an attitude that was so dialed into God. He loved God that he was like, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not going out. I'm not going out like Saul and the Israelites. I'm not going out afraid and dismayed. Good God of mine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand and I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing until I die. Satan thinks that he can wear you down. He thinks he can wear us down and turn us back. Think that he can get us to start getting involved and, 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 and habitually getting into satanic things. We're not doing that. And God is our helper. God is our helper. God is our deliverer. So, oh, hallelujah. We just praise and worship the God of heaven, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We glorify and magnify our God, and we are winning. Shout out, Bokoshai. Let me tell you, I'm going to say this and I close. We'll pick up here next time we get together. But note, Israel, King Saul, these guys were prepared to fall. They were prepared, they were prepared to, for defeat. They was afraid. They was dismayed at the sight, at the, at the, at the, at the, the words of, of Goliath. And note, to give in to Goliath means not only that we failed, but now we're going to bow down and worship and serve Satan, the Philistines. And not only do we now, not, wait, wait a minute, eventually, it went more than just y'all going to be our servants. Y'all going to adopt our ways. So in other words, Satan, Goliath, the king of the Philistines, the entire people of Philistine wanted Israel to turn into Satan worship. Because that's where it was going to go. From servitude to Satan worship. And we are not of this world. So let me just say this here. This world, Satan in this world system wants us to abandon our relationship with God, wants us to abandon our lifestyle and behavior with God, wants us to be like them. Satan wants us to serve him and pursue him and do what he does. I was going to say do him, do his lifestyle. And we are resisting that. We are standing for God. And God has got a David and you are a part of the kingdom of David. Every child of God that can recognize what Satan is doing, recognize this culture and the lifestyle that Satan is pushing on us. We that recognize the will of God, we're standing against it. We're resisting it. We say, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going out like that. I'm not going to lower my standard in God. And watch this here. While all of Saul and the army of God was afraid and dismayed, when they should have been standing strong as giant killers, they were scared and they ran. We're not running from Satan. We're not running from this world system. We're standing against it. And we're letting them know we are not of that. We don't get down like that. We don't do that. We used to back in the day, but we're not doing that no more because the God we serve will deliver us. I believe God will deliver. I believe God is delivering because God has delivered. I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so here, God sends David in the midst of all of that chaos and confusion of dismay and fear. And David comes in there with the word of God and some experience. He came in there with the attitude of God. And he came in there with the productivity of God. Woo! And that's you. That's me. That's us. That's what we're being built and developed to do for the glory of God. Oh my goodness, you're an overcomer. You just overcome and break stuff in Satan's kingdom. You're resisting him. He's fleeing from you because you're drawing close to God. I'm telling you right now, hallelujah. And there are rewards for stepping up for God. So in your current battle, in your current victory, stand for God. I forgot, I gotta go back to Job. When God finished talking to Job, and when God finished cleaning Job's attention and cleaning Job's knowledge base, God said before he blessed him, 
God says, now, Job, get up from there. Stand up right. Let me talk to you. And that's what God is saying to us right now. Stand up right. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you what I'm going to do through you. And God's about to do some amazing things through you, child of God, in the name of Jesus. Well, my time is all gone. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International. We just thank God for you. Hey, listen, uh, send this message to somebody that you know it'll encourage. It'll strengthen them. It'll embolden them, but it'll connect them stronger to the things of God. And we just praise, worship, and magnify the Lord our God because our God is awesome. Your God is awesome. And guess what that means? That means you are awesome. You are awesomely created, awesomely made, and awesomely used by God. Until the next time, may God bless you. May God keep you. Shalom.